Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to answer some of the very commonly asked questions about a complex surgical procedure that is a Whipple's. What will be the scar of this surgery? The, when we discuss the open approach as shown in the graphic below, the scar is known as a rooftop incision or in thin patients we can also use a vertical midline incision. So after this you have undergone the surgery, we are commonly asked how the post-surgery recovery pathway is or what are the factors that are involved, when can we start eating, when can the patient start walking. So let us discuss the post-operative journey of a Whipple patient. Usually after the surgery the patient is extubated or weaned off the general anesthesia. The patient is kept in recovery or the post-operative monitoring area for 30 minutes to 45 minutes. These patients are routinely shifted to the intensive care unit after the surgery for observation. The patient is conscious oriented and talking. The patient can move around and turn but of course there will be pain. The pain is taken care of by the epidural as well as intravenous injections. On the first post-operative day, if the nasogastric tube output is less, we try to remove the nasogastric tube output and we start the patient on shifts orally. Usually by the second post-operative day, in absence of any comorbidities that require attention, the patient is shifted out of ICU into the ward. Second post-operative day, that is two days after surgery, you are usually started on liquids, and this is gradually increased so that you reach your semi-solid diet state by 4th or 5th day and usually normal diet by 8th or 9th day. As far as the tubings are concerned, the first tubing to come out is the epidural. It usually is removed on the 3rd day with tapering doses. So that tube comes out first. Usually the patients are encouraged to mobilize by the 2nd day at least to edge of the bed and by third day with support they should be able to stand erect. Third day is when we may get the patient to walk and if the patient walks well then by fourth day the urinary catheter comes out. Apart from this the dietary changes happen and by the seventh or the eighth day the patient is on semi-solid to soft diet. If everything goes well we check for patency of the joints by sending some blood tests on day one, day two and day five and if everything is going well the drains can come out on the fifth or the seventh day once the patient starts eating well so the drains come out one by one and based on the blood reports the recovery of the patient mobilization as well as the dietary habits we then plan discharging the patient usual stay of the patient a very commonly asked question is anywhere between seven to ten days if some patients are outstationed, then we may keep them for two days prior. We remove the stitches after 10 days. The wound is dressed 48 hourly for the first four or five days. And if there is no infection in the wound, the clips can be removed anywhere between 10 to 15 days. Like I said, diet and exercise are very important in these patients' recovery. We have already discussed how the diet will start for these patients. These patients need high protein supplements for up to three months to cater to their body's needs in recovering from the surgery. Exercise, walking initially, after 15 days a patient can start maybe a mild jog if the patient feels fit. We also advocate lung exercises which are known as pyrometry which starts 4 to 5 days prior to surgery as a prehabilitation and it continues for up to month after the surgery to keep the lungs fit after such a major surgery. Core exercises are not to be performed for one to two months after the surgery because you have a stitch line which can give problems. Walk, jog, climbing stairs is okay. And lung exercises are very important as we have discussed. The patient usually can get back to routine by 15 to 20 days of surgery. And light work can be started after 15 to 20 days of surgery. Usually the patients are back to their routine life maximum by a month of surgery. 
coming to a very commonly asked question that is what are the risks or complications associated with this surgery you need to be aware of the risks so that in case they happen you are not worried and you understand that even if there are complications the chance of reversing the complications or fighting those complications is very high usually whenever we join two things in the body there are two problems that can happen one is the joint can leak and the other is because it's human body wherever we cut the part can bleed so these two are the most significant problems that can occur after a vipal procedure a leak and a bleed the frequency is 5% that is 5 in 100 patients other than this the other complications that can happen are minor and they can be resolved with time leak and bleed also can be resolved with time but they need some intervention sometimes or they need patience and watchful waiting for quite some time for things to resolve however like i said there is a good 95% chance that you will not have a complication in experienced teams and experienced centers apart from this if you want to know details of the risk and complications with a vipal procedure delayed gastric emptying wound infections urinary infections lung infections if you don't do good lung exercises there can be clots in the limbs which can migrate to lungs cardiopulmonary complications can happen because these patients are usually old though we have operated patients up to 80 85 years of age who are otherwise physically fit so these are some of the complications that can happen like i said even if they happen four out of five usually make it through the complications as well other very commonly asked question is on survivals and need for further treatment now this depends on what indication you are getting operated for as well as the pathology report that we will get after the surgery so usually the pathology report comes in 7 to 10 days of surgery and once you get the report you can then have a consult with your doctor to decide further treatment as well as to understand more on survivals for all the patients who are undergoing this surgery for cancer if there is one advice that i can give you this surgery can be offered only to 25% of patients who have cancers that require this surgery that means that out of 100 patients that i will see of pancreatic cancer or ampullary cancer or duodenal cancer or neuroendocrine neoplasms only 25% of the patients are disease wise and physique wise fit for a surgery so if you are fortunate enough to be offered this surgery understand the risk understand the procedure understand that yes it is a complex procedure but it is the only treatment that gives you a very significant survival advantage in these diseases i hope that solves most of the questions that are associated with the vipal procedure if you are or your loved ones are suffering from cancer and need this procedure our team has written a book called taming the tumor that may answer more of your questions related to cancer i will leave a link in the description below also if you have any further questions you can write to us at learnwithadusers@gmail.com or you can visit our website and have a look at other educational content that we have again the website link is there in the description below feel free to contact us and let us know if there are any other surgeries that you would like us to discuss with you thank you